What's up? My name is Larry and today we're going to be going over what I packed for a seven day camping trip on the BMW GS310. Breaking it down into four categories, basically our shelter, our kitchen and food, our clothing for camp and for riding, and lastly some gadgets and toolkits and stuff like that that will keep in its own category to itself. I'm going to be going over basically the essentials I think that you should bring. I'm going to go over some brands and some characteristics of the items that I think are important for uh, longevity and just performance. All right, let's dive into my shelter components. Uh, all these items here I had packed in, in my uh, in the top bag that goes under the beaver tail. This is a 22 liter Moscow Moto Stinger. Basically everything for shelter just rips right off the top and ready to go. First thing I picked up was a two person tent. Um, this is by Big Agnes. This is the Copper Spur. It's uh, basically a bike tent. I think that's uh, a, a pretty good start for motorcycle camping. It's ready built light, the shape and everything is easy to pack. Uh, really nice poles, really nice construction, uh, really nice rain fly, plenty of accessories and whatnot. Um, I'm currently packing my poles in the Moscow Moto pole bag here and that's gonna go under my beaver, beaver tail as well which uh, um, this is great actually. This is my, my, my poles, my stakes, and even my footprint that I have in here ready to go with the tent. Um, again, some small things to remember with the tent for motorcycle camping. Always go one size up. If you're one person, go two. If you're two people, go three. It gives you the extra space for gear and you know bad weather or bringing someone else in there or whatever you need to do, cook or whatever. So it's always nice to have that extra space, especially if you have a footprint, gives you a little extra space under the awning that they kind of set up there. It's a great tent. It, it so far worked great, easy to pop up and whatnot. Um, in the tent, I'm using the Lost Dog 30. Again, pretty basic. I, I wouldn't say it's a, a budget sleeping bag. It's about $180, plenty warm, easy to pack down. It doesn't come with this compression strap, but I, uh, Bought it separately. I think this is from Big Agnes as well. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't love the compression strap. I would rather use a compression bag, which I actually already ordered. It gets the job done. Under that would be the sleeping pad, also by Big Agnes. This is an insulated 25-inch uh, wide pad, which is plenty of room to get quality rests. Uh, this pad is running around $130, um, as well as the pillow is $50. Same idea, same construction as the mattress. It comes pump in the bag that all wraps up in there makes it really easy and then also a good thing to have would be a bag liner now this is good for two things most people say it's just for if you're freezing and you need some extra layers but also is great for if you're melting if you're hot this is great for that you can just slip into this and have a nice light blanket for a cooler sleep so yeah that about wraps up the shelter it's pretty basic um if you're like me you've probably watched 30 of these videos that break down what you should bring on a camping trip and whatnot. But I figured I'd just let you know, this is what I brought. This is why I brought it. Um, Big Agnes is a great company. I've been familiar with them through backpacking and other various things. They've been around for a while. And, you know, I think the first thing I bought was a tent. I usually buy like one product first and check out their quality and then go for whatever else I think I need. And you know, it was it was top notch. Always buy a footprint, it's gonna save your tent, it's gonna save you on wet days, it's gonna give you a little extra storage if you're uh, storing your boots or your helmet outside your tent in your awning area. So yeah, again, that goes all my Moscow Moto 22 Stinger, it gets wrapped up right on top of the beaver tail when I need to get it out, rip it out, good to go. And that's about it for shelter. All right, so this is basically my kitchen and food setup, maybe you know, plus or minus a few things that I throw in here uh, specifically for where I'm going. You got your stove, your food, your pot. I went with an MSR pot, 1.3 liter, pretty simple. Just enough space uh, to maybe make a pancake or grill burger if you want to. Um, I'm using the MSR universal stove. Super easy, not complicated. You just screw your, your fuel on and spark it and you're good to go. I'm keeping most of my stove and my stove... Uh, Accessories in this little pouch here just keeps it from uh, poking or ripping anything and I keep this around the pot just to keep it from clanking uh, This is my coffee maker basically just a French press. It's a camping uh, French press type idea. It's, uh, it's called AeroPress um, Actually works really good. You just boil your water and push it on through the filter 
a nice analogy like this is always good to have. Extra water is always key. I, I'm keeping, you know, this 48 liters full most of the time as like an emergency and then also keeping my camel back, you know, filled as I go. Uh, this is a nice little uh, idea that I came up with. It's just an old sunglass case that I keep some hot sauce, syrup, olive oil, and some uh, seasoning for whatever I'm eating, you know, along the way. You got to have your hot sauce. And uh, this is my food bag. This is just a dry bag by Moscow. Um, this comes with the Reckless 80. It's great for this. So, I mean, a lot of people you can use it for if you have wet clothes or dirty clothes, you throw it in here and you kind of keep it separate from everything else. Uh, a little bit of coffee ground and some pancake mix. And I have a few uh, freeze dry meals in here, uh, as well as some ramen. You always got to keep an extra ramen in there. Um, but yeah, again, you know, as, as far as that goes, you kind of got to go based on what you're used to and what you're, you're comfortable with cooking. Um, the freeze dry foods can kind of get to my stomach a little bit sometimes. These ones haven't been so bad. The Mountain House ones have made me feel pretty crappy, uh, mainly the creamier ones. But, <laughs> you know, if there's a lot of times when you're riding, you can just pull over and get dinner and food. And that's always nice to have a nice hot pizza or a burger or steak or whatever you need. But it definitely does help to camp cook and save some money. But that about wraps up the kitchen and the food. Yeah, you know, it's nice to be creative out on the fire pit if you got one, but you don't oh you can't always do that. So having a stove or a pocket stove is always always good. All right, gear and clothing. So for the trip, I knew I was gonna be doing some highway, some back road, some off-road, and basically went with um, for riding, I went with these former adventure boots. Um this is the classic adventure boot. A lot of people use this boot and that's kind of what I found after doing research on what kind of footwear to use. Um, <clears throat> waterproof, comfortable. Uh, I, would, I would say their protection is mild uh, at the least there. Uh, it can definitely use a lot more protection if you're gonna be doing some heavier off-road where you're you know, uh, susceptible to maybe getting stuck onto your bike or whatnot. But they were great. I have no complaints about them for what I use them for. Um, you can walk a mile in these, no problem. And uh, yeah, these are the second installment. These have the H dry, where they actually um, upgraded the way the waterproofing works. So if you do order these, make sure you don't get one of those old stock boots. Make sure it says H dry on the side. Um, for my jacket, my suit, my pants, I use uh, this is the Revit uh, Sand 4 suit um, pants and jacket. Um, most of the armor comes with it. I did have to buy a back pad for, for it. it was no big deal nothing expensive These are great. It comes with an insulated and a rain jacket that goes underneath that I wore for warmth while riding and at the campsite and even going out it actually looks pretty nice So that's always key to have stuff that does multiple um, uses so um, Now for gloves, I was rocking the Revit Canyon gloves when it was warm um, that didn't last very long, unfortunately. I ended up using these insulated fly racing gloves, which were also great. A little light for what I was doing. I would have liked something thicker, which I did eventually upgrade to some Revit Gore-Tex winter gloves, and I've really liked those since then. Helmet-wise, I ended up buying a Climb Cryos helmet, which is awesome. I love the helmet. It's great. It wasn't the first pick that I had because it was a little over budget, but let me grab that. Yeah, okay, so this is the helmet that I went with. Most of you guys probably know what this helmet is. Um, super expensive, but it is super light. And when you're going for a long ride um, and you're gonna be hitting a lot of bumps and off-road stuff, this thing feels way better on your neck than something twice the weight. Good ventilation, too much ventilation sometimes. A good visor, it's got a great transitional screen on here, which is awesome to have going in and out of shade. I didn't have any issues with it. Sometimes they say you can get like sunspots when you have it flipped up coming through the holes but listen it's not that big of a deal i didn't have an issue it was a super comfortable light helmet and it's really safe and that's what's important i will say that i wasn't fully convinced on the rain gear underneath the jacket so i basically went out and i kept in my backpack that i had on me um, some rain gear some regular hiking rain gear extra large to go over all my gear without feeling too tight or anything like that and that actually came in handy when I had all my layers on and I was still freezing and this kind of just blocked some of that cold wet wind while I was on the highway. Highway with the 310 is not fun. 
Yeah, and you know, while riding, I had this backpack. This is the Climb Knack Pack. This thing is fantastic, super comfortable, nice insulated back. You have a Camelback clip right here. You have a nice hardened top pocket for some goggles or sunglasses. And then you have your accessory pocket up front. Yeah, I had the spot clipped on right here. This is um, my GPS or satellite beacon in case anything terrible happens, which I hope I never have to use. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with the spot, but hey, I will say if you're riding alone, always have something, or even if you're riding with your friends, always have something that is a, a safety line because you just never know what you're gonna get into. Um, some rope in case, God forbid, the bike goes somewhere where I can't get it out and I need to do some kind of pulley system with a few people. Who knows if that would work, but hey, at least it's there <laughs> if I need it. That's that. Now, when it came to clothing that I was using when I was not riding, I basically relied on my pants that I was wearing underneath my riding gear, which was just a basic uh, yoga pant type sweatpants thing, super comfortable, um, kind of like stain resistant um, pants that I knew I was going to be wearing days on end. You know, and, and when it comes to packing, you know, you guys are you guys are big boys. You guys can figure it out. But what I did was a couple T-shirts, a couple socks, boxers. Um, I had one pair of pants that was decently like somewhat not dressy but just a nicer look than some sweatpants that in case i was going out with some family i had something to wear these darn tough socks are great uh, i swear by these things everyone that knows me knows that i wear these things because i tell everybody get these darn tough socks they're lifetime warranty every time i have an issue i send their, my pairs back and they give me a voucher and i go buy a new pair so i have about 20 pairs of these socks um i am a solid customer with them also, the insulated jacket that comes underneath the riding jacket is something I wear during camp or even at sleep if it's really cold. And that, that just that works nicely. I don't have to pack too many things. A second pair of shoes is great to have. You know, you can't wear these if you're going out to dinner, if you're meeting with friends or family, wherever you're traveling. These were just some dark hiking boots that I can just throw on around camp or, you know, if I don't want to wear these going out to a restaurant. Yeah, that about wraps up what I wore for clothes and what I rode with. And again, a lot of it has to do with budget. And there's plenty of other boots out there that aren't as expensive as these. And you don't have to spend $900 on a jacket. But this is just what I picked after doing a bunch of research. Uh, I tried on a few of these jackets and returned them. A lot of these companies like Revzilla and cycle gear a lot of these guys will let you you know buy something and just ship it back and, and that's just the cost of trying to figure out what works for you okay so the next few things that i have here are kind of miscellaneous um, some gadgets some accessories some creature comforts and whatnot simple stuff like your toiletries i have basically your you know your regular stuff toothbrush toothpaste floss mouthwash couple of those floss picks which is great if you're you know get something stuck in your teeth at camp and it's driving you nuts i have a little bit of uh body wash some scrubbing body wash in there in case i hit up a shower and then also some some uh some wipes moist wipes those are those are key to have a pack towel a journal for keeping some notes or just getting bored drawing or whatever a uh, power bank this is actually a solar powered power bank as well as you can plug it in and charge it i haven't i don't know if this is ever actually worked i don't i wouldn't know most of the time it's in my backpack anyways but it does work and i've used it multiple times that's just a simple amazon power bank it's awesome just to have that i like to have that comfort of while i'm sleeping i know things are going on and i know my phone's being charged or my gopro batteries are being charged so and then while i'm riding i'm recharging that which is great i have my headlamp by black diamond this is the storm thing is super bright different settings and different colors and whatnot um, this is my GoPro mount. Now this is uh, a mount that basically just clamps onto your chin in your helmet and it makes it just really easy to take it on and off and it gives you that really good point of view while you're filming. I filmed uh, my first video mainly with just this, uh, with this mount. Um, some lens cleaner and a nice microfiber cloth is great for keeping the lens clean, especially if you're doing highway stretches with all the bugs. First aid kit. So I was going to build my own first aid kit and I started pricing things out and when it came down to it, I found this company called MyMedic. They're kind of commercial and whatnot. It really has a lot and it has a, a good quality uh, bag with plenty of Velcro and adapters and everything comes color coded. I'm even keeping some patches for my sleeping pad and just stuff like that. Um, it comes with plenty of tape and gauze and 
I did do a, uh, a small class that they kind of offer. It's not teaching you too much, but it just kind of gives you an overall demonstration on how to use a tourniquet and stuff like that. So you're not sitting there looking at someone bleeding out and not knowing what to do. I went with the cycle pump and if you listen to Adventure Rider Radio, you've heard them talk about this thing over and over and it worked. So I picked it up. It's a great quality pump, pumps fast, uh, easy to use, it connects to the battery and different connections it comes with in the bag. It's about the same size as my tool bag, which is by Moscow Moto. This is the smaller roll up tool bag, plenty of pockets. It works perfect for me. Now in my tool bag and everyone's tool bag should be specifically built for their bike. And I don't just mean the stock components on your bike because the things that you want to put in here extra are definitely the things that you added onto your bike. Like there's certain Allen key head screws for my bars and my bark busters, my bar risers. There's, there's so much stuff extra on that bike that I wanted to make sure if they loosened up, I had the correct tool to tighten it back up or to fix it or whatever I need to do. And that's what I added to this kit as well as your JB welds, your I got super glue, Loctite, zip ties, tire plugs, you know, assortment, like I said, of Allen keys, a tire gauge, don't forget that, because if you're airing down, then you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, and then a bunch of different bits. This uh, ratchet is great because it does your sockets and it also takes your quarter inch bits for like flat heads and Phillips and whatnot, so. Yeah, that's basically the tool bag and pretty much wraps up what I brought with me for accessory. Now, there's a ton of stuff that I'm leaving out. I know that. This is just kind of a broad example of some of the things you should start with. Um, there's plenty of lists online and that was the first thing I did. I took that checklist, I went through it a few times and kind of got rid of some of the things that I knew I wasn't going to use. I'm not traveling in like desolate areas where I'm not going to be able to buy water. So I did not bring a water filter. If I knew I was going to be in nine degree weather all day, I wouldn't have brought some of the stuff that I did. But having that list definitely helps you kind of go down, make a check. Okay. I have my tent. Okay. I have my sleeping pad. And that way you don't get to camp one day after planning this big trip and getting all your gear and finally getting out there and saying, Shit, I know a lot of you guys are veterans and been doing this a while. I've only been doing it for a little while and I can't wait to do a lot more of it this year. This channel will be following that. I will be posting hopefully videos every other week on rather, you know, a short adventure into the woods with some cooking or some upgrades to the bike and, you know, some new products and events over at BMW. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you guys are looking to see. I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of do the research and put it out there for everyone else. But Okay, so I almost forgot, but I did want to get the Reckless 80 packed up and um, mount it on the bike. Uh, I just position it somewhat. You know, after you get the straps kind of tightened up, it will seat into a better position. You have... Your three main straps for the back here. With every bike, it's gonna be different. So you kinda gotta figure out what works best for your bike. And I just looped it through. And we're just gonna cinch it down, not fully, fully tight, but just enough to get everything out of the way. Now, you have these two other ones now on the outside. I kinda just didn't go nuts with thinking about it and I just went right there like that. And same deal. I think I did actually come around this side like this, if you can see that, pull that down, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so those are pretty much good, right? So now what we're gonna do next is you have your, kind of like your side bag uh, strap mounts. Those are gonna come down to the side of the bike, and passenger foot peg guard. You can strap it to that and that works fine. Um, it actually looks perfect for this setup. Um, I think I have strapped it a little differently one time, but I really like the way that this actually pulls the bags in a little bit. And now we're gonna do the same buckle on the other side. Okay, so you have all this extra strap because you don't know where you're gonna be strapping to. So you can do the old fold, fold, fold. You can do the roll up. I prefer doing the fold. Um, I don't really like things getting rolled up and they get all curly and pigtailed and whatnot. I kind of like how flat this looks. So I've been doing that, it's been working. Not one of these Velcro uh, loop um, 
fasteners came off or came loose. So I wouldn't worry about anything like that. Now that we got the harness on, this thing's good to go. We, we were on, that didn't take long at all. If I wasn't talking to you guys, I would have had it on twice as fast. Let's get the dry bags kind of filled up and on the bike. This is your dry bag. It's got a nice glass here so you can, not glass, but a sight window so you can see what you actually put in here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start packing up my kitchen and get this rolled up and put it in the side. Another little tip, I found myself doing a lot if I was at camp and I was starting to pack up, I would try to get probably half or three quarters of my, my dry, dry sack full and packed and then into the reckless aid. Get that thing, you know, get a, get a good uh, wad of gear in there and that way you can push it in here really nice. Get it in there nice and now you can kind of you have your opening here and you can just load that up my stove you know it's kind of crazy to think that like if you had to you can get on a bike like this and you can just basically live off this thing so you know you have your dry bag clips you know you can clip these together to hand to handle it and bring it in somewhere but then you have your your clips on your Reckless 80 that you're gonna actually clip that into and that kind of holds it together and keeps it closed all together. So this is, uh, like I said, this is gonna be like my clothes. Mm. All right, we're gonna roll this up. Push all your air out. Okay, so now that bag's in there pretty good. You have your main. Okay, so let's get the stinger loaded. I'm sure most of you probably know this, but I'm just gonna tell you stuff that I've learned over the past couple years. When you're on the off season, don't store your sleeping bags like this. The best way to store these things is totally stretched out on a clothes hanger in your closet, um, kind of just staying nice and loose. Okay. Push down the air, roll her up. That just goes like this. There's some Velcro down there to kind of keep it in place. And then you have your first strap done. Um, I usually take my pole bag. You don't want to lose your poles. And now you're going to put your second straps down and that's going to hold everything together. Oh no. Ah. Got her. Okay. First aid kit I was kind of, just kind of throwing right here. I'd rather have it ready to go. Um, and then auxiliary pockets. Handy dandy pockets here, close that up. And then you also have a strap to kind of hold this in. On the harder sections of the BDR, I mean, I was like almost getting air on some certain areas. And then I re had to remind myself that, okay, I got 60 pounds of gear on the back. This is probably not what I should be doing. Wow, now that I'm thinking about it, that was pretty, pretty dumb, but I didn't lose anything. I have a nice little hatchet on the side here that I got to use during camp. That's the gist. Um, it really is a, a fantastic setup. This bike doesn't need the heat shield. Uh, I know if I had this setup on my other bike, it probably would. But this is kind of like my adventure setup, kind of just a little bit more campy and rugged and more off-road. Everything's soft bagged, everything's um, kind of weather resistant and it works really good with the 310. I, I just like it man I, I have a good time. I had such a good time on this bike All right guys. Well, that's gonna be that wrap up for this video I hope you enjoyed or learned or uh, just came to make fun of me or whatever But I'm really excited with this channel hoping to put out some good content for adventure riders and people um, wanting to be inspired to do something they've always wanted to do. So um, this has been a, a hell of a journey trying to get to where I'm at and I can't say how excited I am to be doing some cool rides and some camping and some cooking. And you know, if you're new here, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. I have two other videos on the 310 right now. I think we're gonna move on to the 850, kind of breaking that down. So that should be fun. If you've been here, thanks for subscribing and asking questions and leaving comments. It's really cool to see people interested in the 310. It was uh, good hanging with you. I'll talk to you soon. And, you know, it's cold, but uh, if you can get out there, get out there.